So today we have Anissa Rodriguez from University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston School of Dentistry. Anissa, how are you doing today? I'm doing great and yourself? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Of course, we have a lot of chaos going on with this whole virus situation. But, um, on, yeah, yeah it, we're, we're making it through, we're making it through. Exactly. So let's go ahead and get started with the interview. Um, so if you could, please give us a brief summary of your general school journey. So basically, where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major in, and did you or did you not take a year off? Okay, so I'm from originally from Brownsville, Texas, okay. which is, um, yeah, I don't know if too many people are familiar with it, but it's basically like 15 minutes from South Padre. It's like tip of Texas. Um, uh, I was born and raised there. I decided to stay um, at the local university um, for school, which is only an hour away from my hometown. Um, still dormed and everything because it was a full hour away, um, right. but I went to the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Um, majored in biology mm -hmm. and um, I did not take a year off but I did take a semester off before starting medical school okay okay so okay so you just graduated a semester early I, I graduated a semester early correct yeah. awesome awesome okay and so um, for most of our viewers or maybe they don't I know that in order for you to go straight from undergrad to dental school you have to have a decent GPA right you have to have a decent GPA you have to have a decent DAT Correct. So what I wanted to ask you, um, what a lot of our viewers ask us is, what, what would be your number one tip on how to succeed on the DAT? You know, that's a huge factor of your application. Right, right, right. And, right. Um, you know, people no, really- That was definitely my biggest stress, for yeah. sure. Um, and um, I think my advice for, for pre uh, in regards to, like, the DAT is um, to not, like, try to do a little bit of everything. I kind of made that mistake and tried to do 30 million programs, you know, I, I purchased all the books, everything. Whereas I should have just like, if I were to go back, I would definitely do things differently. I'd probably just stick to one or two programs and, you know, set up a schedule. I was kind of all over the place trying to do 30 million things in one day. And that just wasn't, um, that wasn't very practical. Um, but um, as far as the DAT, I mean, there are a lot of resources nowadays. Mm. I mean, you know, DAT Bootcamp for me, I think is probably the best resource out there right now for um, students that are taking the DAT or studying to take the DAT. Mm. Um, I feel like that kind of gives you everything you need. I know a lot of students that only use that resource and, you know, scored, you know, uh, well in the 20s. And so, um, so that's definitely a good resource. Um, Another thing is to make sure you give yourself enough time to take it, um, to study for it. Um, not too much time. I know some students kind of, you know, like confuse it with the MCAT. And I know some people study for the MCAT a full six months in advance where I don't think, you know, that's a pretty good, I don't think that's a good idea for um, studying for the DAT. I don't think um, more than three months is, you know, um, necessary. Yeah, I, yeah. And even then three months, I think is kind of pushing it. I feel like a good, <laughs> eight to 10 weeks is, you know, sufficient time to, to like, um, to learn everything that you need for the DAT. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's my advice. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And so for, um, for your school, are there any type of like pre-dental programs that pre dents can kind of get in and kind of show their face so that they can show interest to the uh, to the admissions faculty, you know, that right. they actually want to come to this dental school? Is there anything yes. about that? Yes. So um, there is a summer enrichment program that I was a part of. I applied um, the summer after my freshman year. Um, I was actually um, recommended the program by another pre dent from my university. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I just did it last summer. Um, he was like, it was a great time. And this program is, um, it's actually offered in like multiple states. Mm -hmm. And my dental school just happens to like host the program that's in Texas. And so I went ahead and applied and I got in. And so I basically spent the summer here in Houston. Um, uh, staying at a nearby university and going to the dental school every day and taking courses. And so um, in that experience, I did get a chance to meet a lot of the faculty. Right. I got to meet um, third and fourth years. Um, um, and I did meet someone from the admissions committee. So that definitely gave me, like, I feel it gave me a pretty good leverage um, over, you know, other students. Um, and it gave me exposure, you know, like it, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. Um, 
to dental school up until that summer. And once I spent the entire summer here, I was like, okay, no brainer. Like I definitely want to come here. Um, it was a great experience. And so uh, I think that's a really good opportunity. And I tell every pre dent that I meet, I'm like, please apply for this program. It's so good. And that's the, uh, is that the A S H P E P? Yeah. Summer -E health. It used to be S M D E P, but yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I did. I did the S M D E P. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Amazing. So I did it the first year. They changed it to S H P E P. Ah, yeah. okay. 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 Awesome. Awesome. And so, okay. So you took the D A T. You obviously did well. Um, how was your actual interview? So my actual interview, um, I wasn't sure how my actual interview went. Okay. I kind of walked out and I was like, oh man, there's a few things I would have done differently. The good thing is it wasn't my first interview. Um, I definitely didn't do too hot on my very first dental school interview. Um, but going into this one, I kind of like had an idea of like, okay, how everything goes. Um, it kind of took a while for me and my interviewer to kind of like, you know, yeah, um, yes. I, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was, um, he was older and, um, I was just like, how the heck am I supposed to make conversation with this person? Right, um, right, it was right. very intimidating. And, um, but after like, I found something that we had in common, like he was Christian and I like noticed that I was like, Oh, we talked about that. And then he was prior service. My mom was prior service, like in the military. So we went ahead and talked about that. And then I asked him a few questions on like, why he decided to go into academia and um yeah i mean the rest of it went pretty well um but i don't want to say like oh yeah i walked out and i knew like oh i'm definitely that getting it mm -hmm. awesome awesome okay and so you went to a couple of other interviews like you said what made you decide on your school it was primarily my the summer program that i did um i knew that i wanted to stay in texas um, just because anything out of state is really expensive. Um, and Texas has, you know, I mean, like it's still very expensive, but you know, relative to like other dental school, um, um, tuitions, um, the Texas schools tend to be like on the lower end. Definitely. So I was like, okay, I definitely want to stay in Texas. I don't want to go out of state. Um, and I originally wanted to go to the school in San Antonio just because that was actually closer to home. Um, and it's not as big as Houston. Uh, Houston's obviously really big. Um, but after that summer that I spent, and I interviewed at both places, after that uh, summer that I spent here, I was like, you know what, I could definitely see myself living here for four years. I was like, I fell in love with the environment of my school. And, you know, I got to meet some of the faculty, like I said, and it was just, you know, I, it was just one of those things where I was like, you know what, this is, this is definitely for me. I could definitely see myself here um for the next four years and like you know enjoying it um yeah. it was not such a cutthroat environment like you see in other schools um it was it was really neat i mean i it was a no-brainer for me i'm telling you after that i was like okay i'm definitely here right right okay awesome and so can you kind of walk us through what it was like throughout your entire like first year i mean granted you're still in your first year so right. i know things are a little bit different due to the virus of course but how has it been? I mean, and I'm talking about didactic classes. Like, are you exposed to any type of clinical procedures? Are you even able to pick up a drill? Can you kind of talk to us about your first year in general? Yes. So um, I was actually really nervous coming into my first year just because I did take that semester off. And I was already like, oh my God, okay, it's been, you know, a full six months since I've seen a book, since I've, you know, done anything school related. Um, so I came in and, um, I remember like the summer before we started, they sent out, um, well, they were constantly updating us with emails as far as, you know, white coat ceremony, orientation, welcome week, all of that. And they told us, they were like, you know what, don't even bother studying for anything. We want you guys to enjoy your summers. Trust me, you know, there will be plenty of studying to do once you start dental school. And I was like, yikes. Okay. Yes. And so, um, I didn't, yeah, I, I mean, I just kind of, you know, enjoyed my summer prior and was just kind of like, you know what, like, I'll just take it like anything else and right. we'll, you know, we'll just adjust as we go. And so, um, starting like right off the bat, um, I don't think it was as, um, crazy as I thought it'd be. Um, I was also used to taking heavy hour semesters in undergrad. Mm -hmm. I remember my last couple semesters, I took like 20, 20 plus hours. So I was used to, you know, like taking multiple courses at once. Of course, nothing prepares you for dental school though. Nothing at all. Like, I mean, you know, these are all, you know, very challenging courses and um, 
it's, you know, the whole eight to five schedule was probably the biggest adjustment for me. Mm-hmm. I know when people ask me, like, what was the biggest adjustment? I'm like, it's definitely the schedule. Yeah. Um, you know, you're used to just going to one or two classes a day and then, you know, spending the rest of the time studying or whatever. Whereas here you have to be physically present from eight to five, Monday through Friday, and then you're still expected to study when you get home. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a just lot. a lot. It's, it's a, a very lot. big adjustment. It's a very big adjustment. I definitely was um, very sleep deprived for the first couple of months. I was like, wow, okay, this is a lot. Um, as far as um, the clinical stuff, um, so first semester, we were only in the clinic setting one day out of the week, and that was dental assisting. So we had a brief course, like an introduction to like dental assisting, and I had dental assisting um, experience. I was like, okay, like this is perfect. And we were dental assisting third and fourth years. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually still doing that. We, we still go into clinic once a week and we do that. Um, but we, uh, the only like really hands-on thing we did first semester was like a uh, wax lab. I don't know if, mm-hmm. I know a lot of dental schools don't do it. Uh, we're still doing wax lab. So um, that was the only thing we did. And that was like really frustrating for me, I guess. Cause I was like, I was, you know, I wanted to get in there and just start right, drilling right. stuff. Um, uh, I really, you know, was, I, I wasn't a big fan of wax lab. Um, but I understand why they had us take it, you know, just to kind of start developing our motor skills or whatever. Um, so we did a full semester of that. And then second semester definitely has been way better than first semester. Not so much because, um, you know, um, it's not as content. I mean, it's not as exam heavy. Our first semester we had God, like 70 exams all semester. And this semester, I'm finding myself a lot more, spending a lot more time like in my labs as opposed to like taking exams. You know, um, last semester we were taking like two, three exams a week. Whereas this semester we've had full weeks where we don't have any exams. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Um, But I mean, everything is still very time consuming. You know, the time that I'm not spending studying for exams, I'm spending in lab, working on operative. Um, So yeah, we did get drilling. We did start drilling this semester, which was really fun. Um, it kind of, you know, it, it sucks that we're not in it now and it got cut kind of short because of this whole um, situation that we're in, but um, it's, uh, it's been good. It's been good. I mean, you know, it's challenging like anything else and some days are easier than others, mm-hmm. but um, one thing that I really loved about dental school that, you know, I like, that's very different from undergrad was that um, everyone's kind of going through the same thing, you know? And I don't feel the need, I, well, at least a lot, and I speak for a lot of colleagues as well, like we don't really feel the need to compete against each other anymore. You know, the hardest part was getting to dental school. And once we're in it, you know, like, I feel like I have a really good support system, not only with my, uh, my colleagues, but also with my faculty members. Um, everyone just kind of helps out everyone, which is awesome. So it's like, yes, we're all suffering, but, you know, we're all suffering together. You know, sure. we're just all going to get through it. And at the end of the day, you know, it's about, um, you know, our first ranked person is going to be a doctor just like our last ranked person. It's just about getting through. I have no plans in specializing. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, you know what, once I get into dental school, I'm just going to chill out, just take the classes I need to, you know, get what I need to when, um, and then just go from there. But um, it's been a lot. It's definitely been a very big adjustment. Um, but very doable and um they tell us they remind us this all the time in school they're like you know what we wouldn't accept someone that we didn't think would be able to get through all of this yep. so and you know they're constantly reminding us that we're there for a reason and uh as much as i complain about it sometimes i'm like i definitely you know i'm so blessed and and i would rather be here than than not be here so yeah. um, no, honestly yeah. no, that's huge that's huge and no I, I like how you said you know, the, the last ranked person will still be a doctor like the first ranked person. I think that sometimes people can get so wrapped up in in the grade aspect, which is, of course, you want to know what you're talking about always, but you also do have to understand that, like, there's so much to dentistry. Um, and just because you might be the last person in your class, but you still might, you probably will be an amazing dentist. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not necessarily based off of if you get an A in biochemistry. Exactly. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand that, like, you're, uh, you being able to be personable with people, you know how to converse, Perfect. you know how to do these different yeah. things. It, it's literally, I want to say almost 60, you know, 55% of what it actually takes to be a dentist. So that is huge and super important. And I don't think that you, I don't think that people in general understand that until you're actually in dental school. And you right. understand what it really is, you know? 
Exactly, exactly. And we're constantly reminded from our faculty, you know, they always tell us, they're like, guys, when was, the, when was the last time you, or like, have you ever asked your dentist what they were ranked in dental school? And it's like, no, you know, people don't, uh, patients don't go to dentists because, you know, like, oh, they were first, they were second in their class. No, they go, you know, um, depending on how, you know, that person is, how they are treated. Exactly. 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 exactly, exactly. It's a people profession. And I know that, you know, like, your rank isn't going to determine how successful you are as a dentist. Like, it's no, not, not at all. all. I mean, you know, you have to know your stuff, obviously. But I mean, you know, those those part, boxes will be checked. You know, when you do your your license exam and when exactly. you do all these different things, and you have to take boards. Mm -hmm. uh, and granted, I guess you're going to take the integrated boards, correct? Yes. So we're the guinea pigs. We're the first year to do that. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's not something that I'm like really even thinking about right now because i'm like i have so many other things to stress right right right, but, right. Uh, yeah we do take the integrated boards yeah so it's a little bit different but regardless you're not going to pass the boards you're not going to pass the the licensing exams if you don't know what you're doing so exactly. um, everybody you know don't don't get discouraged because dental school is always going to be difficult mm -hmm. uh, but you will make it through and you will be become the dentist that you always want to be so <laughs> um, another question i have for you and i'm asking every dental school uh, student this question what makes your school unique you know I mean I know that you haven't been a student at any other dental school but if there's something that you know like you know what UT Houston has provided me this type of experience or whatever it may be and from my uh, exposure to other dental schools I know that this is specific to UT Houston um, I feel like I don't know enough about other dental schools to be like okay like this is only at utsd right, 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 right. my biggest thing like what really separated utsd from a lot of other dental schools for me um was the sense of community at the school and um you know yeah it's really just like the environment i mean dental school is already stressful enough and and we hear from so many faculty they're like guys we know we've been there you know we know the dental school is a very uh, stressful environment to be in. You know, the last thing we want is to make it even worse for you. You know, um, I don't know. I I feel like the faculty that we have has just made the experience or like the whole transition just so much easier to go through. Um, and like I said, my you know, and I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for my colleagues as well. Um, everyone just really tries to help everyone out. I never feel like you know. People aren't stingy when it comes to sharing notes. You know, as soon as someone makes a review, they're sharing it on the group me for the whole class to see. Um, and we do have a lot of events as well. We have a lot of um, um, clubs uh, available at the school and we have um, lots of social events that we do. Um, and I feel like that definitely helps out. Um, I think it's very different from medical school where it's, you know, cause they, they have a lot of the classes online so they don't get to see each other very much. But because, you know, we're such a small class and we're with each other all the time. Everyone just like, you know, knows everyone. And it's a, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like the vibes are, were, are, were really different from my school compared to other schools. Awesome. Awesome. And then last question of the interview, I kind of want to ask you if you could go back in time, uh, you know what, two years ago while you were uh, going through the whole application process, what's one piece of advice you know, one encouraging word, one tip that you would give yourself in order to help you more efficiently uh, make it through the whole application cycle? Um, gosh, let me see. I feel like, okay, um, so I was definitely very like hard on myself um, in undergrad. Um, I rushed a lot of it. I feel like I could, I like, I definitely regret, you know, finishing so early. I feel like I could have enjoyed my undergraduate years a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was also so like, um, I just felt so much pressure to like get in, get it right the first time. Yep. And, you know, once I, once I got here, there were a lot of students that have applied multiple times, you know, yep. and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think had I told myself that and ha had I known, you know, like, okay, you know, it's fine. You're still going to eventually get there. Um, I feel like that would have saved me a lot of stress mm -hmm. that I like put on myself. And it wasn't even so much that I had pressure from like parents or anything. It's just the pressure that I put on myself to like do well the first time and to get in the first time. Cause I'm like, how the heck am I going to take a whole year off? Like, that's just crazy, you know, but I know a lot of students that do it and they're doing perfectly fine in dental school. Amazing.
Amazing. I want to say thank you so much for your time today. Most um, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. If anybody has any type of questions, what's the best way that they can kind of like reach out to you? Um, so I don't mind uh, answering to emails, but they can also follow me on Instagram if they need to reach out to me through there. Um, yeah, I'm not, a, I don't have a Facebook. I don't have like any other social media. So that's really the only um, platform they can uh, reach out to me in. But um, yeah, I don't mind providing my email if they want to email me or follow awesome. me on social media. Awesome, awesome. I'll put actually like, both in the description box below. So like, like we said, if they have any questions, they can definitely reach out. Awesome. Uh, but from the Future DDS family, we want to say thank you so, so much. Uh, we know you have a lot of things that you're still doing. You're still taking online classes right now, correct? All day, yes. Yep. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, we, yeah. we definitely know your time is valuable. So we want to say thank you. No, yeah, most definitely. Thank you so much for having me once again. And of course, you know, um, if you guys ever need anything else, if you guys have, you know, any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for help. <laughs> amazing amazing everybody if you haven't already make sure you hit the subscribe button below um if you have any questions for us over here at future dds you can shoot us a dm at underscore future dds and we'll get back to you as soon as possible but until next time see y'all later